Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and I'm, I've been involved in, with this church, in this church and with this church uh, since 1984 when we moved to the village. Um, and it was very shortly after that I learned about Jane Haling. And um, I am, I always can't believe this, that um, this evening is happening. Uh, we're very, very grateful to you, Mary, for. Well, for coming tonight, but uh, especially for writing this wonderful book. If you haven't already bought it, I would commend it uh, to you. And uh, there's still plenty of copies, Jeff. Yes, there's still some copies over in, in the corner. Um, and all the questions that you think you might like uh, Mary to answer probably will be in the book. Uh, so Mary and I are. They're not turned on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need to do? Press the button and says on. <laughs> Am I on now? <laughs> That's why I have a technician column. <laughs> yeah, so um, what I thought uh, we would do tonight was just a sort of, sort of chat. Um, <coughs> uh, a, written out a few wee topics maybe, um, uh, just to, to tell us uh, about, for, first of all, um, the task of writing a book, because, I mean, that, that's a daunting, fearful task, I would think, uh, to be asked to write a book. Uh, so how, how and when were you uh, commissioned to, to do this? What, ha what happened? Uh, how did it come about? It was nearly two years ago, um, I was offered the chance by Berlin publishers in Edinburgh to write a book because they thought that there should be a book about Jane Haining. They are um, wanting to rescue Scottish heroes and heroines who, um, who might be in danger of being forgotten and they wanted to have a book about Jane Haining. And I, at that time, I'd heard of Jane Haining. Um, because I had noticed an article, I think, in the paper about her some time before, and I'd actually cut it out and kept it. What the article told was that she had worked with children in Budapest in the 30s and 40s, and when war broke out, she was ordered home by the church, but she refused to go because she felt she must stay with the children. And I was a person who worked with large numbers of children, and uh, that struck a chord with me, and I felt that was so much the right thing to do. And I had kept that article, but it was all I knew about Jane Hayden. So when I was offered the chance to write, or asked if I would write this book, I, I couldn't believe my luck, really, the privilege of being asked to do it. I think it came about because um, I'd never actually written a book, <laughs> but I had worked with children and I had some experience of working under a regime that was quite difficult. Um, and I think that was probably why they, are, they thought I might be able to do this book. So that, that was really um, how it came about. And how long did it take you when you, um, do you... You don't start writing, no? I didn't start writing. I started by going to Google <laughs> and finding out immediately a lot more about Jane Haney. First of all, the fact that she came from Dunsker and you know, the sort of fact, the, the outline of her life. Um, I was so, because I hadn't written a book before, my memories of writing things were like essays that you had to do at university, which I had a terrible tendency to leave till the last minute. And I would panic the day before and be up all night and think I was never going to do it. And, wishing I'd never been born. So <laughs> I was so anxious that that would happen with a book that I wrote and wrote and wrote and I finished a draft in about three months and I sent it off to the lady and she said, well, you finished it already. 
So, um, but I was glad I'd done a, a first draft quickly because that gave me the sort of bones of it. And then I could see the gaps and I realised that, you know, the things I really needed to do more research on, uh, particularly the Hungarian side, because we had quite a lot of stuff in Scotland, but there wasn't, I didn't have much knowledge at all of the details of her life in Hungary. Um, I know you travelled. Uh, where did you go on your research? Uh, the first place I came was here, which seemed an appropriate place to start, and was a great place to start, of course. Um, I met Pam and other people from the group who have done so much to put together the story of Jane Haney. And um, I learned a lot here. I live in Glasgow, so I wandered around our local area where Jane Haney actually lived when she was in Glasgow, and I found stuff out there. I went to Paisley and um, had a look at JMP Coates and got stuff there. Um, I went to two or three places round about Scotland where there were people to speak to, and then I went to Budapest um, once as a sort of doing a recce to see, you know, what there was and try and find my way around. And then when I'd identified where I really needed to go, I went back again and, and did some research there and visited Auschwitz. I felt that was necessary in, in view of the, the story. Um, tell us about a, a, an amazing person you met. Well, one of the great things about doing this book has been I've met amazing people all over. It's something about Jane Hayden that people open up and want to talk, people who have any connection with her want to talk about her. And I've met, first of all, the amazing people here um, who have you know, been so dedicated and have set up the Heritage Centre. And you know, that goes on happening. Tonight, I'm absolutely delighted that I've met um, some people from the Jewish community um, in this area. And that is a wonderful and amazing connection to me. I feel that us all to be together tonight, remembering and thinking about Jane Hayden, it's so appropriate. I feel that's you know something that she would really um, be be happy with. And so that's an amazing thing for me. Um, and in Budapest, I met some amazingly generous and committed Hungarians who actually honour the memory of Jane Haney more than we do in Scotland, apart from places like Dansker and Queen's Park Church in Glasgow. The Hungarians, as you would have heard from the marsh that they had a couple of weeks ago in Jane's memory, they really honour Jane Haney. And people like Margaret Hallash, who was a teacher at the school where um, Jane worked, she kind of took me under her wing and took me all the places I needed to go and she's been so generous and helpful in sharing things. So I would say she's an amazing person. And the great niece of Jane Haney's great friend, Margaret Prem, who was the headmistress of the school in Budapest. And the two of them were, you know, they were an amazing pair. I think they were quite similar in many ways. And together between them, they um, made that into a wonderful school and kept it going really against the odds, um, you know, defying all the, everything that was thrown at them. And her great niece was, um, you know, it was a, a great privilege. She's an amazing character. She's also made a film about Jane Hayes. Is Lydia. Yes, Lydia. Lydia Van Helsing. She came here, I think, and she was making a film. And she did, as I say, is a wonderful character. She's got a flat stuffed with things, um, you know, the kind of family archive. And, Unfortunately, most of it's in Hungarian, which I'm not very, uh, like, I don't know a word of. But um, although we didn't have a much common language, we did manage to communicate, and she was, she was she stayed in my memory. It's a very amazing person. Thank you. Um, I have never been to Auschwitz. Probably some people here have. Um, I, I don't know how I would react. Um, I feel that I want to go one day. Um, how were you mentally prepared for your trip to Auschwitz? Um, how how did you cope with that? I suppose I was as mentally prepared as you could be. I read a lot about it over the years. I'd thought a lot about it. You. 
can't really prepare for it. Right? You know, you just have to, if, if you decide to go, you just have to go and have the experience. I found when I was actually there that although I was standing in the places, I knew what happened there and the guide was explaining it and um, you could feel the atmosphere they have that saying that no birds sing at Auschwitz and certainly it was silent, silent when we were there. It was a very cold late winter afternoon with the sun just beginning to set and the, the atmosphere is kind of indescribable but even there I couldn't really take in the reality of what had happened there. I just could not get my head around it. Um, the thing that I suppose got, well, everything got to me, but the two things I remember that really touched me, one is that they have a big um, heap of human hair, and in the hair there are tiny little pigtails, and that, um, I've got a granddaughter with little pigtails, so that really got to me. And the other thing was they have a big kind of display of things that people have brought with them to Auschwitz. And it was all the things that you take on holiday. When you go to a self-catering cottage, you think, oh, I, bet it, I don't know if they'll have a decent vegetable knife, and I don't know if they'll have a peeler, and maybe I should take the grater. And it was all these things. And I just could, you know, think of all these women trying to pack in two minutes, what can I take from the family? I don't know where I'm going, but I'm pleased to <coughs> so, so that, yeah. that got to me. Yeah, I, obviously that um, uh, trip must affect people nowadays as well. Um, tell us uh, about any lighter moments in here. Well, there are lots of lighter moments that I discovered in the life of Jane Haney. And I didn't want her to be remembered only by her death, you know, that doesn't seem right because she had such a, she had such a great life that she made the most of. Um, she's described once or twice as you know, quite a solemn little girl or a serious, thoughtful little girl. But she obviously had a, a great sense of fun. And she, um, there are lots of descriptions by the girls of how she joined in everything. She went swimming with them, she went skating with them. She did a fantastic Christmas and all the girls who you know given reminiscences tell about all the things that she did at Christmas to, to make it terrific. Um, and also one of the things, I mean it's a very poignant thing but it is it was a lighter moment. Um, just a night or two before she was taken to Auschwitz, when she was in the city jail, along with other women who lived to tell the tale and have recorded this, um, Jane Haney organised a fashion show in the cell with all the rags that they had between them and got everybody dressed up and Jane gave a commentary in German and they were all in fits of laughter. And to me that that is, you know, that is resistance. And it, it was a lighter moment for all of them. And there were, you know, there were lots of things like that that she obviously did. So, yeah, lots of lighter moments in her life. Uh, what was the most surprising thing you found out about Jane? I think the most surprising thing was I found a letter in the Church of Scotland files in Edinburgh from a man who had read something about Jane Haney in the paper and had written in to say that his father and Jane Haney had been going to get married. So you need to get the book to find out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did research that quite carefully and I met with the man and I heard all about it. Yeah. So that did surprise me. I don't know why, because she was a lovely person. The girls were always trying to marry her off. I thought that it was such a shame that she wasn't married. But um, that what did surprise me when I came across that, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, that surprised me as well, <laughs> reading your book. Um, because, uh, um, well, I, I, I kind of feel as if I've known her for a long time. I know, yes. it's, a, it's a kept my yeah. surprise about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, that was a lovely book. You have to buy the book. <laughs> um, did you enjoy? Um, the challenge and the process of writing the book, 
I did love, I loved the process of writing the book. I, I found I got caught up in the thrill of the chase. You know, you would read a wee bit and then you would find another bit somewhere else and you would think, oh, I must go now. I mean, I really, I, I loved doing that. And I, just the whole process of meeting people and gathering information and making up wee systems to keep track of it all and thinking of all the time I'd wasted at university, I could have been doing something like this. But I did, I, I loved doing it. I really enjoyed it, it was great. Did you have a deadline? No, it's not from the publisher. I made myself a deadline because I knew that that was necessary to get it done. But no, I, I think I could have taken, you know, longer than I did, but I, I felt I'd sort of done it, so time to bring it out. Is there another book? <coughs> I'd love to write another book, but I, um, if anyone has any books they want written, <laughs> <laughs> Secretary of State um, David Mundell here about three weeks, two weeks ago, and um, he was very um, impressed with our Heritage Centre, and he uh, uh, was going to be leading the march uh, in Budapest and, uh, two days after, so he came on the Friday and uh, uh, spoke to us, looked around and things, and then went off and led the march, and there's been a lot of publicity um, following his, his trip. Um, what's next for Dunsker, I, uh, I wonder, and I, I hope that we will just be here, keeping welcoming visitors into our, our uh, heritage centre and to the village, and because people are um, hearing the story, and when you read your book, they'll be flocking here <laughs> about where she lived. Yeah. So, can I ask you a couple of things, Pat? Yes. Um, I've, you know, found that there are commemorations of various kinds of Jane, including your Heritage Centre, and these beautiful songs and Stuart's poem that we heard tonight. I think, you know, she's inspired a whole range of um, artistic and, and kind of um, commemorative things. But one of the things that I think is she probably would have liked the most is the essay prize that is run in Hungary every year among school pupils in um, you know, to commemorate Jane Haney. And I know that you've, well, yeah. the, the prize is a trip to Scotland, um, some of which is spent at Dunsker, and I know you've hosted um, some of the prize winners here, so I'd love to hear about that. I'm sure you would like to hear more about that. Um, well, that was started, the, the, the first group came in 1991, and they've been coming every year since, either two or three students and an accompanying teacher. Um, and they, they come to walk in the footsteps of Jane Haining. Um, they know a bit about her, but uh, they don't know very much about Scotland. And they are amazed by the walls and the sheeps. <laughs> <laughs> sheeps. <laughs> um, and that, they always come in from that. Uh, and it's lovely when they are here in Dunsker to walk them round past the farm through here past. This wasn't, of course, her church, uh, but uh, about equidistant from the farm to here, uh, round past the church that she attended, the Craig Church. Um, so we've done that with them, uh, and we show them um, a, a little oak tree that was planted a few years ago from an acorn that somebody um, brought back from Auschwitz. Uh, and planted in um, Burnham in uh, Perthshire and 10 years on it was big enough to be planted and the person who had done this um, had seen a, a film that Sally Magnuson uh, presented um, on the Sunday night and he phoned me on the Monday morning and said we would like um, the time is right for the tree to be planted we'd like to bring it down to Dunsker if you can find somewhere to put it. So that was lovely. Um, so our Auschwitz folk, I think, is, is doing okay. Um, and that's one of the things that we take the children to see now, not another of the things, and to visit Dumfries Academy. They're due again on the 27th of June this year's date. Um, uh, we're very grateful 
for, um, for, for help, for financial help as well. And there's a, a lady in, in Dundee who um, you were talking about the letter, I think she's yes. connected to Vista. Yes. And she gives talks around um, guilds and uh, organisations in Dundee and um, is, uh, is not, she, she doesn't charge for her talks obviously but sometimes she makes it, they make a donation and she sends it down here mm -hmm. which is wonderful for the, to help students. Um, so, yeah. And our Hungarian teenagers nowadays pretty much like Scottish teenagers or the things you notice that are different? Well they are, I would say um, they seem to be very mature, but that's probably just because I'm getting older and all <laughs> teenagers are seeming quite mature. Um, they are generally very good uh, speaking in English and they're confident enough uh, to tell us a bit about themselves when they're here. And we ask them to do that to um, meet the congregation. Um, we have a barbecue and uh, it's... Uh, uh, they, they will say something either in the church or at the barbecue to the whole group. In fact, the, the, the teacher of the group who came last year um, said that this, the, the trip to Scotland was a highlight of her teaching career. Oh. And she's <laughs> retiring this year, so <laughs> that's that is. So, can I just ask you just a wee bit more about the Heritage Centre and you know, what that's been like, getting that open and yes. having people come and how you go about telling the story. Yeah. Well, the Heritage Centre is um, about, uh, it's got three strands to it. It tells the history of the church, um, this church, in parallel with the church in Scotland. Um, and it tells the history of the village, the story of the village, because there are amazing stories and amazing people who have lived here in the past and who still do, um, different people, but it's an, it's an amazing story. Um, I think Deirdre walked, did you walk the trail today, Deirdre? Um, um, a memory trail, um, which, we, which we have a leaflet for, um, and takes people just a walk around the village. And the third strand is, is Jane Haley. Um, and because she is a, such a, an important figure now, really in Scottish history, um, it, it is wonderful and her story becoming more widely known um, is enabling people and, and inspiring people to come here and, and find out a little bit more about her. Um, yeah, I think we've, uh, we've got a good story um, to share with people and they enjoy it and they always uh, uh, seem to be quite uh, impressed and uh, surprised when they come in and see our beautiful church. Yes. Well, thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good to hear that. Um, I know we can't go on forever, so we can do Yes, yes, we shall. But uh, thank you very much. Um, there, I, I know Colin said at the beginning that uh, hang on to your cups. Uh, there's not a hurry to leave here. Um, if anybody wants to refill their cups, if anybody wants to purchase their book or have um, Mary sign it, um, that, would, that would be wonderful. But um, I think, shall we wind up here? Yeah, yeah. okay. Thanks.